Okay, check this out guys. 20 frames per second, yo! Hey guys, so I've been using the Xperia 1 Mark IV and I think it's an interesting product because it really is a camera trying to be a phone. Now, this is not my first experience with the Xperia, so I'm very familiar with its unique 21 by 9 aspect ratio, which I still think is one of the most comfortable handset aspect ratios to grip, loud stereo speakers on the side with spatial audio, that rare headphone jack for audiophiles and creatives, a bright 4K OLED display with a 120Hz refresh rate, toolless SIM card slash expandable storage tray so you can quickly remove it to swap out micro SD cards. But Really, the Xperia 1 Mark IV stands out as being the only phone that I feel comfortable using for my actual day-to-day -day work, shooting product b-rolls, thumbnails, anything that before I could only trust my Sony mirrorless camera to do. You see, most phones, including the current flagships from Apple and Samsung, they shoot great pictures, but in this struggle to make tiny phone cameras shoot the perfect picture, they've been pushing more megapixels, sophisticated HDR, sharper lines, bokeh on demand, you know, stuff like that, just so that you don't need any prior photography knowledge to shoot a great picture. So if you hand that phone to a child to snap that picture, it's gonna be a reasonably great picture 9 times out of 10. But I've never been able to use those phones for my work because somehow the pictures never look as natural or as clean as my Sony A6300. Often the white balance is off and that throws off the color. Areas that I want to be dark get overexposed. Lines are far too sharp so the pictures look overprocessed. If these are casual shots that I'm taking for myself, they're perfectly acceptable, but often these are not suitable for my work. Plus, I want to have total manual control over my shot. Everything from adjusting shutter speed, ISO, aperture, manual focus, white balance. Yeah, I know, I'm a control freak. And the output has to be as clean and as natural as my mirrorless camera. And so far, only the Xperia 1 Mark IV came the closest to doing that for me. And here's why. It's got three focal lengths, 60mm ultra wide, 24mm wide, and 85 to 125mm telephoto. We're talking real optical telephoto. In fact, this is the first phone in the market to have something like this. And this is the focal length that I use for shooting products. I shoot really small objects, and when I want to zoom in and capture it, it really helps that it's got Sony's world-famous optical image stabilization and autofocus technology, so I'm able to capture a sharp, clean image all of the time. It also helps that the shutter speed on this device is insane. We're talking 20 frames per second burst mode. So you can shoot handheld like the pros, just fire off a burst, you heard that? Then pick the sharpest image out of the lot. And having used Sony cameras exclusively in my day-to-day, -day, this phone really feels like a natural extension of that. Its camera interface, Sony's famous eye autofocus, subject tracking, these are more or less what you see on Sony's Alpha cameras. There's even a two-step shutter button, just like on cameras, one step locks focus, another press takes the shot. All the real lens elements are 12 megapixels, but they all shoot 4K video up to 120 frames per second. So whatever focal length you're shooting, you can achieve that cinematic, buttery smooth look. Peter McKinnon style, or maybe you're something of a Daniel Schiffer, I don't know. Either way, the results are impressive, which is why I use this a lot for product bureaus. It's just a lot more convenient, and I can achieve a similar look to my Sony A6300, in most cases. Even when shooting walkie-talkie videos in 4K, the results are very usable, and the audio pickup is great as you can see. Yep. 
So I'm at Suntech City. That's the fountain of wealth. Yeah, so this is the microphone performance of the Sony Xperia 1 Mark IV. Also, I'm not sure if the video is stabilized properly. It seems that stabilization is working because I'm just walking casually. I'm walking and talking casually like every day, like usual. So you can really use this camera for live streams and vlogs just on its own. But I'm not saying that this phone is just for pros. If you're just getting into the game and you want more automation, the Mark IV's basic mode in the Photo Pro app is great for that. It will still capture fantastic pictures, very close to what I get when shooting in manual, but of course, basic camera fundamentals are still essential. For example, lighting is important. Don't put your subject in front of a light source unless you're looking for a different look, maybe to shoot a silhouette, because unlike other camera phones, these don't try to auto-balance individual parts of the picture to balance the scene exposure. It really behaves just like an actual camera would, in that it compels you to be more thoughtful about your shot. That is why I don't really think of the Xperia as just another phone. Like I said, it feels more like a camera trying to be a phone. That being said, there are some things that I didn't quite like about it that really stood out. For example, I appreciate having that fingerprint unlock on the power button. It makes a lot of sense having it there, but I would rather have it under the screen like most flagship Android devices. That way it's so much easier to unlock the phone with both hands. It's got a 5000 mAh battery. Now, that's a very decent capacity, and you can get a full day out of this, but not if you're shooting videos, snapping pictures, or gaming with this device. I mean, I've never ran out fully, but I noticed that it drains about 30% in just a few hours of heavy usage. It also does heat up easily too, even when you're just shooting photos. I mean, it gets so warm that even a burn warning pops up on the screen. That does not look good. Might not be a problem in winter, but on a hot summer's day, I recommend that you pay more attention to that heat warning. Clearly, more has to be done about that cooling. Personally, I won't really mind that the device could be a little thicker to accommodate better thermals. I mean, as a creative professional, somebody who is clearly the target audience of such a product, I won't really mind a bit more camera for a little less phone. But what do you guys think? Leave your comments below. Thanks for watching. Smash like and share if you like this video. Now, there are other aspects of this phone being geared towards audiophiles and gamers, which I might cover in future videos. If you want to see that and more content from this channel, get subscribed and tap the bell button to stay notified of new content from me. A big shout out to my Patreon supporters as always. You can also join us on the world's most popular gaming chat app, Discord, if you want to hang out or chat. Link is in the box down below. I've also reviewed the Samsung Galaxy S22 Plus. Click here if you want to watch that or watch another video from this channel.